Hello and welcome everyone to this digital dailies presentation using Clipster. I'm going to use Clipster and Spicer to explain um, a little bit more about um, how DVS um, wants you ideally to use um, their digital dailies feature. Um, I'm going to use red footage as an example and um, convert everything to MXF. So I'm going to show you a nice little workflow as a proof of concept. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Let's get started. <clears throat> um, to browse files and to put them into the bin, um, you can use the Windows Explorer and just drag stuff in, but um, consider using Spicer as well. Um, the Spicer application can be used in the, in the digital dailies process for logging purposes, uh, which is quite interesting. So if I go in here, um, I have card five, so here is my my red footage, and if I go in, I can see the red file, uh, red files with um, the quick times. Double click, and here we are. Okay, so um, this is my red file. Um, <clears throat> now I can simply drag this into the bin from here, um, which I'm not going to do. Um, instead, I want to use the logging feature of Sp of Spicer. Um, to create subclips or at least clips that I actually want to use later on because not all of this is really useful, maybe only bits and pieces. So let's park the whole thing maybe somewhere in the middle and say, okay, from here um, I would like to start to add my own production metadata or just um, create a subclip from here. So what I can do is add a marker or add a marker and um, <clears throat> I can add a second marker later on as well if I want, delete marker. So why do I have markers? Well, let's jump to this marker. It allows me to add extra production metadata and this can be really useful if you uh, want to add things for later on for the editor, for example. Let's say um, I need um, extra information to hand over to the editor, so I say scene one and take, take one. Let's just add a little bit of stuff. Camera ID one, okay. And maybe tape ID, tape ID one, okay. So once I have done that, I say save. And this information now is not saved with the red file. It, it, is, it is saved with a database, okay. So um, with a Spicer database, so it's a separate database, but everything will go into the final render, into the final MXF output, ALE output that I want to deliver to the Avid workstation. So um, let's do it. Let's do the same with the second clip. Um, again, park the cursor somewhere here, okay, and say I would like to add a marker and do the very same again, but. Um, just for demonstration purposes, add a, a two. Um, now I am currently blocking a complete clipster by just doing logging tasks, but um, the Spice application um, can run on any 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 other operating system. I could, for example, install it on my Mac here, and then remotely log into the clipster. So I would see with my Spice on the Mac exactly the same, and I could do this type of work on a laptop. I don't really have to do it well on the Clipster itself. So just keep that in mind. And all this comes basically with this with the dailies logging option, I would say. Um, <clears throat> um, okay, so, so far so good. Uh, let's hit save. And let's drag this file in. Okay, so if I click on it, you can see that the clip actually does not start at the beginning, but somewhere in the middle. And again, for demonstration purposes, okay, and same thing here. Um, <clears throat> now let's go into the clipster and drag the stuff into the timeline. At this stage, I don't I didn't do any any project setup. It, I, it's just drag and drop, and um, from here I can actually start to worry about how I want to make it look. 
Um, <clears throat> so you can go ahead and say, um, oh, wait a second, the frame rate is not quite right. And I would like to try it with a fit. Basically, it tries to fit the whole image into the frame. And I have this black bars, which I may want to get rid of by saying crop. Okay, so that may be a little bit better for me. <clears throat> now, the next thing you want to do is um, configuring basically everything for MXF render. And um, keep in mind, you can generate a template. Um, so you don't have to set this up every time all over again. Okay, so, um, but I'm going to, to start from scratch to explain it. First things first, um, the image. I would like to have, first of all, I would like to change by double clicking on the clip, I can open up the red properties and um, just do something, okay? Okay, so apparently I did something, but it's only on this clip and it's not, not really on that one, okay? So if I want to copy this onto all the clips, I can say modify all clips, clips after, or clips of the same camera. Okay, so this is, this is quite important actually, because um, it's usually just one camera that you want to adjust and not all cameras. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to say all clips. And now basically it's, it's um, now has been applied to this one as well. Okay, on top of that, I can add a color correction and export my color correction with all the um, um, CDL, color decision lists. So um, <clears throat> you definitely may want to do that because you can track the CDL and you can export the CDL as well. So this is important to mention. Um, anyway, <clears throat> good. So, so far so good. Um, we may want next to enable the burn-in. So you simply say heads up display and this will apply the burn-in to the overlay, not to the SDI output. If you want to have on this machine the SDI output as well, you simply say burn in SDI output, okay? So um, important to mention, I think. Um, by the way, that's a good trick. Double clicking enables um, a full, full screen view basically, okay? Um, if you want to edit your burn in, you have to right click and say display settings. And then <clears throat> you can see um, these entries here, these two checkboxes. Every checkbox refers to one window, okay? So for example, um, I have placeholders, tags for um, the text. So the text file name has a tag, has a tag which, which basically is referring to the file name. For example, if I don't really want to have this bin clip name because it's kind of redundant, I simply go ahead and say, let's delete this. And instead of doing the bin clip name, I would like to have, for example, the red color space. Okay, there are a million things you can add. Um, it's up to you what to choose. Um, let me adjust this. Okay, so now we have the red color space, red space. Um, for whatever reason, you may want to do that. Um, of course, you can adjust this window here as well. You can make it transparent by changing the appearances, all that. Um, if you want to burn in an image, well, you select another checkbox, which appears up here. Um, <clears throat> and you say, I would like to have an image. And now you have to point to that image, obviously. There's the Digistore, the Digistore logo or whatever logo, you can move it to the right position and then burn it in when you render out the MXFs. At this stage, we're pretty much ready to render everything out. Um, there is a little bit of preparation that you may want to do. Um, for example, the timecode, will it play out the source timecode when you, when, you, when you finalize? It will automatically, but you can double check by going on to source timecode and see if, if the source timecode is correct here. Um, another very important thing that you need to do is um, if, because I am currently working with an open project, I use the project tab, but in general, you, you should use the defaults tab. Um, I need to go to real name 
and currently I have the original file name. What, what does this window actually mean? It means um, whatever I configure here will be the metadata that is in the final file. You may want to play around with either bin clip name, or original file clip name, or the R3D real name. It's, it's up to you. Um, now, I would like to um, actually take the folder name, but um, point to a folder up, so the card actually. Um, if we take a look in the Spicer, we can see that um, I have subfolders and all are in this card 5 folder. So I would like to have that as my real name. Just, just for fun, folder name, clip folder, and then I say clip folder plus one because it's actually not in the same folder, it's one up. Okay, So that works pretty well and it affects just the current project. If I want all my future projects to be affected by my settings, I need to change the defaults. This um, requires a restart of the software, very important. Also, ensure when you, when you, when you want to create MXFs, um, make sure that you always have in the general tabs the rename MXF option activated. Very, very important, okay? So far so good, we are ready to go. So, finalize.